Welcome to the Collecting and Viewing Exception SQL with CA Detector for DB2 for ZOS video. This video is for database administrators and other users who have used CA Detector and now want to learn how to use the SQL Exception feature. For an introduction to CA Detector, see the CA Detector for DB2 for ZOS demo for new users video. Collecting by exception lets you capture individual SQL queries so you can view the exact metrics and the host variables that were used. This is not possible when viewing SQL standard activity because the metrics are summarized at the SQL statement level. With a collection profile, you can define criteria for capturing SQL requests as exceptions. In this video, we'll explain how to create and modify a collection profile select options for collecting exceptions when starting a collection, and view exception data during collection. In this section, we'll create and modify a collection profile. A collection profile lets you define global thresholds for CPU time, get page requests, and fetch count that determine which requests are exceptions. For exceptions, you can enable collection of static SQL, dynamic SQL, and host variables. You can also create application groups to limit exception collection to specific plans or programs, and to find resource groups with unique threshold criteria that apply to the application groups. We'll start at the CA Detector main menu. To access a collection and report profiles menu, we'll type 4 at the option prompt. The collection reporting profiles menu lets you manage collection and reporting profiles. We'll type 1 at the option prompt to go to the collection profiles display. The collection profiles display shows the existing profiles. To create a new profile, we'll type S in the create profile field. The create collection profile display lets you enter the information for the new profile. We'll enter the DB2 subsystem ID that the new profile will be used with. Next, we'll enter a name for the profile and a profile description. Because a collection profile is a data set, we'll need to enter the high-level qualifier and the data set allocation information. We'll then press Enter to create the profile. A message appears confirming that the profile was successfully created and initialized. The profile contains default values that we will modify in the next section. We'll now press F3 to return to the collection profile's display. Notice that the list now includes the accepts to profile that we created. Next, we'll show what the profile contains. We'll type S in the line command field for the new profile. The View Modify Application Group screen shows the sample application groups defined in the profile. The Set Global Defaults option lets you access the global threshold settings for the exceptions. We'll type S in the Set Global Defaults field. The View Collection Profile Global Default screen shows the current threshold settings for static and dynamic SQL exceptions. Global settings can be in effect when a request does not meet the criteria defined in an application group or when you have not defined an application group. You can modify any of the thresholds by entering S in the Update Global Defs field. Instead, we'll press Enter to view the second screen of global settings. For an interval, you can limit the number of exception requests that are captured and the amount of storage available for host variable data and dynamic SQL text. You can also select whether to collect dynamic SQL, static SQL, or host variables as exceptions using global thresholds when a request does not match the criteria of any application group. Instead of modifying these values, we'll press F3 to return to the View Modify Application Group screen. The View Modify Application Group screen lets you access the other sections of the collection profile. We'll type R in the View Group Type field to view the resource groups. The View Modify Resource Group screen shows the sample resource groups defined in the profile. We'll type S in the Add Resource Group field to add a group. The Add Collection Profile Resource Group screen lets you define properties for a new resource group. On this screen, we'll enter a resource group name and description. 
For SQL collection capture thresholds, we set the CPU time to 2.5 seconds and set the get page threshold at 700. Note that these values are for this demonstration and your actual threshold settings may be different. We'll press enter twice to save the changes. A message appears confirming that the resource group was successfully added. We'll press F3 to return to the View Modify Resource Group screen. Notice that the new resource group has been added. Next, we'll type A in the View Group Type field. The View Modify Application Group screen lets you access a sample application groups or add a new group. We'll type S in the Add Application Group field to add a group. The Add Collection Profile Application Group screen lets you enter the name and description for the new application group. We'll enter that information and press Enter to go to the next screen. The Add Application Group Plan Program Entry screen lets you enter properties for the new group. We'll enter a plan name prefix and the resource group that we've created and press Enter twice to save the changes. This will cause any SQL request from a plan name beginning with RBPAP that meets our resource group criteria to be captured as an exception. A confirmation message appears stating that we can add more plan entries. For this demonstration, we won't add any more entries. The modified collection profile meets our requirements. In the next section, we'll start data collection. In this section, we'll show the options that you need to specify for exceptions when you start a collection. You must enable externalization and specify a data store name, SQL exception options, and a collection profile name. We'll press F3 until we return to the main menu. We'll then type 5 at the option prompt to initiate a collection. The initial start collection display lets you enter the time, externalization, and auto start options. In this example, we'll change only the options that are required to collect exceptions. Exception collection requires externalization, so we'll enter Y to externalize the data, then enter the high level qualifier and data store name. Note that the data store that you specify must have an exception data set allocated. We'll leave the other option settings as shown and press Enter to go to the second screen of options. The second Start Collection Display screen lets you select the types of data to collect and specify the collection profile. We'll enter Y for Standard Activity, View by Keys, Dynamic Exceptions, Static Exceptions, and Host Variables. We'll also enter the name of the collection profile that we created, 20 for the exception cache size, and leave the other options set to N. We'll then press Enter to start data collection. In the next section, we'll view SQL exceptions as the collection runs. In this section, we'll show exception SQL activity while a collection is in progress. We'll start at the main menu, Select the current interval and view SQL activity organized by plan name. We'll then show the summary of exception requests listed by op ID and show the exception requests for an op ID. Finally, we'll show the details of an SQL request and show the SQL call text that caused the exception. We'll press F3 until we return to the main menu. In the main menu, we'll type 1 at the option prompt to view current interval data. The detector plan name summary display shows SQL activity organized by plan name. We'll type X in the view type field to use the exception screen path. The exception SQL user summary display shows the exception SQL organized by op ID or user. We'll press F11 to scroll right. In this screen, each metric value is the sum of the counts for the individual exception SQL requests. We'll enter S in the line command field for the op ID to see the individual requests. The exception SQL request summary shows the SQL request for the selected op ID organized by plan. Notice that the plan names match the RBPAP prefix value that we set in our application group. Also notice that the get page column lists the individual requests 
that exceeded the 700 get page threshold that we set in our resource group. We'll press F11 to scroll to the right to see more information. Notice that the SQL requests match the application group, resource group, and threshold information in our profile. Also note that the program that generated the request is indicated. We'll type S in the line command field for the second request to view the request details. The exception SQL request detail display lists the SQL call statements that comprise the selected exception SQL request. Notice the get page value of 750 for the fetch statement, which is above the 700 get page threshold that we set in our resource group. We'll press F3 to return to the previous screen. In this screen, we'll type Q in the line command field for the second request to view the SQL text. The exception SQL call text display shows the SQL call text that generated the exception. In your environment, you can use this information to determine the cause of performance problems. This concludes the collecting and viewing exception SQL with CA Detector for DB2 for ZOS demonstration. In this video, we have demonstrated how to create and modify a collection profile, select exception options when starting a collection, and view SQL exceptions during collection. Thank you for viewing this video. For more detailed information about CA Detector for DB2 for ZOS, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can go to the product documentation, visit the CA communities, or see the learning path.